In 2023, the Cricket World Cup will be hosted in India, a country that contains more than half of the world's cricket fans. It'll be taking place at 10 different venues around the country, spanning from the Himalayas in the north to the tropical coastline further south. With that being said, here are the 2023 Cricket World Cup stadiums. Narendra Modi Stadium Well, we've got off to a flying start because this is not only the biggest cricket venue in India, but it's the largest stadium in the world. Unsurprisingly, it'll be hosting the final. The ground, which is named after the sitting Prime Minister, was built just a few years ago on the site of a pre-existing stadium. You could even say it's the same venue. The design is not a million miles away from the stadium it took over for the top spot, the MCG. Although the seating is at a more shallow gradient, it has less tiers, and is clearly a lot more colourful. M. Chinnaswamy Stadium It might be a lot older than the last one, but it doesn't lack in technology. In fact, a large chunk of the stadium's energy consumption is provided by the solar panels on the roof. I suppose that's not that surprising given that Bengaluru is known as the technology capital of India. The last time India hosted the 50 over World Cup in 2011, this ground hosted a famous match where the Irish beat the English. Ireland sadly won't be at this year's tournament, but let's hope the Netherlands can swap their Dutch courage for the luck of the Irish. Anyway, if I had to point out a negative, it'll be the vast amount of pillars that are causing some obstructed views. But I do like this ground overall. M.A. Chidambaram Stadium Speaking of hosting famous matches, this was the site of the tied test between Australia and India in 1986. Yep, they had to wear ties for some reason. Very odd. Due to a major renovation prior to that 2011 World Cup, this stadium looks completely different from when it did back in the days of the Tide Test. Some newer additions are the segment and stands that let in the breeze, which is not only helpful in keeping spectators cool, but like the Fremantle Doctor in Perth, it can be helpful for swing bowlers. You may remember seeing these stands kept empty due to bureaucratic reasons. That's no longer the case. Arun Jaitley Cricket Stadium Speaking of uniquely designed stands, this old ground has one of the more dramatic examples of one. I remember the first time I saw that back in the day. I was thinking, what on earth is that? They repurposed a parking garage or something? But it actually looks pretty cool, and provides a lot of surface area for advertisers. Another stand is actually named after Virat Kohli, who, in case you don't follow cricket, is still actually playing for India today. As you can sort of see, Delhi's air quality is notoriously quite bad, and in the past, players have actually had to wear masks, and that was pre-pandemic. Himachal Pradesh Cricket Association Stadium The Himachal in Himachal Pradesh is in reference to the Himalayas, part of which resides in this state. And that fact is quite apparent when you take a seat at this stadium. Just beautiful. What is almost equally as beautiful, but lacking in the same grandiosity, is the architecture throughout the stadium, which is reflective of the architecture throughout the region. This state borders Tibet, and is the home of the exiled Dalai Lama. So I suppose it's quite fitting that this place is as tranquil and beautiful as the Patala Palace itself. Obligatory free Tibet. Rajiv Gandhi Stadium. No, it's not that Gandhi. It's named after yet another Prime Minister. Spoiler alert, there's more to come, so you can look forward to that. He has quite a few stadiums named after him, because to have just one stadium named after you would be pretty pathetic. You have to have at least three named after you to be a real baller. Anyway, this ground is quite highly regarded. Not necessarily for its spectator amenities, but for the ground and the pitch itself. It's high scoring and makes for attractive cricket. Eden Gardens. Having opened in 1864, this is the oldest stadium in India. It might even be the oldest in Asia. For a long time, it was also the largest cricket stadium in the country. But of course, Ahmedabad has since bested it. 
but don't feel too bad for Kolkata. They still have the largest football stadium, and this ground is still regarded as the home of cricket in India. Just like the home of cricket in England, there's a large bell that rings out at the start of the day's play. But the Lord's atmosphere doesn't even come close to Eden Gardens. Unsurprising given the capacity difference. BRSABV Ekana Cricket Stadium. Well, the full name is actually Bharat Rasna Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee Ekana Cricket Stadium. They had to shorten it because only pearl divers have the lung capacity to say it in one breath. In some ways, this stadium is just like Narendra Modi Stadium, minus the upper deck, and obviously a different colour scheme. But the design is a little more complex than it seems. Materials like marble, terracotta and red sandstone have been used throughout the stadium, which is a nod to the local architecture of Lucknow. Ooh, Lucknow. That sounds like a good name for a casino. Wankhede Stadium. This ground is considered to be Mumbai's main cricket stadium, which is interesting, because it's neither the biggest cricket stadium in the city or the most historic. But it is probably the best, to be fair. Although it was pretty basic for most of its existence, once more it was redeveloped prior to the 2011 World Cup, where it hosted the final. India beat Sri Lanka, by the way. The stadium's design is characterized by a steep seating, which is necessary given the lack of land available, but it's also ideal in my opinion, as it puts spectators right on top of the field and makes up for its slightly smaller capacity by making that a little bit more intimidating. MCA Stadium. Most of the capacity here is coming from the symmetrical, uncovered lower seating bowl. However, the southern end breaks up the monotony by not only having an upper deck, but a roof as well. Speaking of which, the roof consists of dozens of PVC fabric sunshades, rather than a solid, watertight roof. That's no big deal, I mean, if it's raining heavily, the players would have come off the field anyway. And this design allows for plenty of airflow. The stadium is actually yet to be fully completed. It will eventually have a capacity of 57,000. That's a rather nice view. So there you have it. Who do you think will win it? India are probably favourites, but I reckon the Dutch are going to be hard to beat. If you're new around here, welcome. Also, subscribe please, if you want. I mean, if you want, you don't have to, but yeah. Thanks for watching, have a good one.